My name is Tobias May. I'm the worldwide head of the contemporary art department, and I'm here to talk about one of the key paintings of the 20th century, which is here, Andy Warhol's Coca-Cola bottle number four. Now, it's really rare to stand next to art history in our job. We see great things, and then we see a very, very important painting. And that is Andy Warhol's picture from 1962. And in my research about this painting, I came upon his own diaries that were published in the late 70s together with Pat Hackett, where he talks about this very painting and what happened. And I will read it because it makes everything very, very clear. And this is 1962, when Andy lives in his house above the studio and he invites friends to come and look at his paintings. 1962, he is just about to break out as an artist, but he's uncertain how he will break out. And he was very friendly with a man called Emile de Antonio. Emile de Antonio was a filmmaker, but also somebody that knew Andy and that knew the art world and had a very good nose and eye of what was going on. And here Andy describes the moment that Emile de Antonio comes to his house in 1962. At five o'clock one particular afternoon, the doorbell rang and D came in and sat down. D is D Antonio. I poured scotch for us and then I went over to where two paintings I'd done, each about six feet high and three feet wide, were propped facing the wall. I turned them around and placed them side by side against the wall and then I backed away to take a look at them myself. One of them was a Coke bottle with abstract expressionist hash marks halfway up the side. The second one, just a stark outlined Coke bottle in black and white. I didn't say a thing to Dee, I didn't have to. He knew what I wanted to know. Well, look, Andy, he said, after staring at them for a couple of minutes. One of these is a piece of shit. Simply a bit of everything. The other one is remarkable. It is our society. It is who we are and it's absolutely beautiful and naked and you ought to destroy the first one and show the other. That afternoon was a very important one for me. So you see from this text that Andy took it to heart. And this was the painting that he would go out into the public with because he understood that at that very moment pop art was born. So this painting is as important if we wanted to go there as the Demoiselle d'Avignon or the Coons Bunny. It's one of those pictures that it is art history in itself and it is hugely important, you can't overemphasize it. And what's so astonishing about this painting are so many things, apart from it being so stark and so impressive, it's over life size. The Coca-Cola bottle is bigger than I am. So it's meant to impress you and stand and stare almost at you as a human being would. And then what you see is he uses Coca-Cola twice. He uses Coca-Cola on the bottle with trademark registered underneath, but he uses it again next to it up here, writing and registered trademark yet again. And then in order to make it even more abstract or, or less painterly, so to speak, this is letter set. This is not hand painted. So he makes it even more machine-like. Here then you have this sort of iconic, pop symbol that in a way really plays with perfection, plays also with the anthropomorphic image of the bottle, because Andy was deeply interested in stardom, deeply interested in celebrity. He keeps saying that what he loves about Coca-Cola is that everybody drinks it. Famous movie stars drink it and people in the street. So he loved the idea of using something that would come to you, to another person, to me, and was completely pervasive. So that's sort of the, another undercurrent that comes across in this picture, is that he wants to use something that is completely global. And with this image, in a way, like the big 40-inch Maryland's that he also made, this is where he most successfully translates globality and iconography and a symbol into a work of art. I think the most remarkable aspect of this picture is it stands up against all the giants of 20th century art. A great painting by Art Jackson Pollock, a great painting 
by Picasso, a great painting by Matisse, and any great painting that art historically really changed the course of the way we look at art today.